Boy, this comment section is going to be something. <laughs> Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. This has been requested, um, today's episode has been requested by a lot of you. I have put it off for a long time, simply because anytime I do anything like this, especially if you go and look at my uh, Top 5 Unpopular Opinions, uh, you get a lot of comments from people who are personally offended when I don't like the same things they do. Um, even though the arguments that I post are, you know, just just opinions, my own opinion, you do get the other side of things where people get, you know, they get their feelings hurt. Um, another thing is, if you're an author, there might be a chance that you're on this list, so maybe don't watch this. Um, because, uh, you know, if you get upset, there's nothing I can do for your own self-esteem. I'm sorry, if it hurts your feelings, then... I'm not going to apologize because these are my personal opinions. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that don't like me. I'm sure you're going to see a lot of dislikes that will make you feel better down there below this video because anytime I do one of these videos, they get disliked. Um, but the like ratio always ends up being more than the dislike. So until that reverses itself, I'm going to keep on doing these videos for solidarity for people who may feel the same way that I do about certain popular things. So this is my top five unpopular opinions about popular authors. Um, I will ask that you hang around to the end for possibly a surprise. Number five, I'm just going to go ahead and get him out of the way, James Patterson. Um, I've heard several things from several people. He used to be a good author. Um, he just recently, he's, he's no longer an author. He's just a marketer. He just throws his names on books, which is true. I mean, even the book that he wrote with Bill Clinton, The President is Missing, was actually written by neither of them. It was written by a guy named David Ellis. So while there's something to be said about, yes, he does not write his books, he's also not a good author. If you go back to even his first novel, I think Along Came a Spider, I think it is, it might be Kiss the Girls, I can't remember. I went back and tried to read his stuff at the beginning to see if he ever was a good author. And of course, he wasn't. Um, and I say, of course, because when you look at the quality of writer that he chooses to work with nowadays, like David uh, Ellis, um, Maxime Pietro, Petro, whatever the heck that name is, they're just really bad authors, period. They're word mills. And he hires these people not because they're good writers, because, but because they write a lot. Um, same thing with Brandon Sanderson, which I don't hate on. He's not on this list. But, um, because I did like his superhero series. But these are authors that just crank out words with no thought or care for, you know, uh, literary merit or anything like that. Now, if you like those, that, that type of stuff, that's fine. I don't. But if you do, then go make your own list <laughs> talking about the people that I like. It won't hurt my feelings a bit. Uh, next on this list is Josh Mailerman. I have no idea. I, I have no idea why this guy is popular. None whatsoever. Um, the only thing that I can pick out is that he writes short chapters, and short chapters are really, really popular nowadays. It gives a false sense of progression. So it's like, oh no, I can't stop. Instead of the story being so good, you can't stop. It's like, oh, why not just do another chapter? Just do another chapter. Um, there's actually been studies that show, you know, what what chapter lengths, what length your chapter should be, and that's another reason, going back to James Patterson, why James Patterson is so popular because of the short chapters. Now, I also thought that Bird Box maybe I felt like it was hot garbage because of the hype. Also, I paid full price for the hardcover at my local Books a Million, um, and that's I think twenty five, twenty six dollars because of the hype. I was I just happened to be out. I saw it on the shelves. People were raving about it, so I picked it up. I have never gotten rid of a book so quickly <laughs> before ever. There's just so many problems, and I discussed that in my review of the the movie and the book that's up on the channel. There's so many problems. I also have a review up on book likes for that. I had reviews up on good reasons till till I started getting threats of doxing and death threats. Um, coming now, why I say it might be the hype train, um, and it might be because I bought the book and didn't like it. I bought the book for twenty seven dollars. Um, I went ahead and uh, requested his one, what was it, um, the one about Bar Unburied Carol. Um, I requested that from NetGalley, got it for free. I barely made it, I don't know, probably five, six chapters uh, before I rage quit it. I, I, there's something about the guy's writing that I don't like. It, it irks me. 
He's as vague as Peter Straub without the literary merit. Um, there's a reason why Peter Straub writes the way he does, and that's because by the end you're supposed to figure out this puzzle piece, and the, the vagueness for no reason other than to be spooky, it doesn't work for me. If it works for you, that's great. Number three on this list is Paul Tremblay, um, or the, what I call the, the remaster, the reboot king. Um, he takes other authors better works like The Exorcist and then he remixes it and he puts out a head full of ghosts. Um, he's, he's done this three times so far. Um, every single one of his books has just been a reimagining of a more uh, or of a book that worked better by someone else. Um, and the, the, the level of thievery really upsets me um, because that's it was almost the same. If you take The Exorcist by William P Peter Blatty, and you take Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, and you go chapter by chapter, other than the blog posts, the books fit almost perfectly. It's like he went down, it's like, okay, this I need to write, write, write my version of this chapter, and, you know, it, but it, you, could, you could take both of those structures and it'd be the same, is what I'm getting at. Um, and the next on this list uh, is going to be... Uh, it's really going to upset a, a certain type of person. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the way. We're going to run through it. H.P. Lovecraft. I can't stand the way this dude writes. Let's completely ignore that the horror community has some kind of, some kind of sickening affection for this person. Other, not just his mythos, because they put his bust on everything. They have awards with his likeness on it. This man was a terrible shit human being. And if he was around nowadays, he'd be protested. I mean, that's, 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 that's the truth of the matter. But for some reason, there's this, there's this love affair with horror and this, this old racist that people love. And you, even if you, you read, if you're in love with his stuff, his work was super racist, like the, the horror at Red Hook. And there are people who say, yeah, we can look beyond that and appreciate the mythos. Sure you can. You, you, you can, and you can build on that like uh, Victor Laval did with the Ballad of Black Tom. But to actually celebrate the man himself, I can tell you to go fuck yourself. Because that, uh, that man does not need the hero worship that he gets to this day. And anytime I see someone hero worshiping him, I just completely ignore them. That I, lo I lose all respect for that person, and I just move on. But it's funny to watch like the HWA and um, other, other authors I won't mention um, have this hero worship for this guy and then turn around and play SJW. That's, that tickles me. That literally makes me laugh to watch these guys go, Oh, the, Trump is terrible and all that, all, 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 and then to turn around and go, H.P. Lovecraft is my god. The hypocrisy is stunning. And last but not least, let's get, get bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Stephen King. Uh, I don't think Stephen King is a very good horror author. I don't think Stephen King is good at scaring people. I've read some really good horror in my time, and I don't think Stephen King is a good horror author. Is he a great storyteller? Sure. I, I, you, know, you know I'm a fanboy. But Stephen King, I don't think that he should go back to writing horror. I think he's perfectly fine the way he is writing the literary, the dark literary fiction that he's writing, I don't want him to go back to the days of Pet Cemetery and It and The Shining and Salem's Lot. I don't want that king back because the king nowadays is better than king back then. It's just the truth. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye! Y'all still it here? <laughs> it's all honest opinions. I, was, I wasn't fucking with you at all. Um, I can't wait to see the comment section of this video. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest one, the one that I will never change my mind about is H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, Josh Malerman could write the next It. Uh, Paul Tremblay could finally, you know, bust out of his box and run over and you know, write the next, what, whatever, the next Lovecraft mythos or whatever you want to call it. I mean, these guys have, uh, they have potential. I mean, they're not terrible authors. 
Uh, Josh Mailerman, I kind of think he is. I, I really don't think that he's a good writer. He might be a good st storyteller because people seem to really hone in on that. Even on Goodreads, if you actually deep dive into some of the reviews, um, they're not talking about the good writing. They're talking about the content of the book. Um, and there are some people who get that confused, um, that that content equals, you know, the talent. Um, and there's, it's a bit, I mean, it, the same thing could be argued with me. I'm not a very good writer, but I can, I'm, I'm a good storyteller. Um, and it's, that's been proven just by people quoting, <laughs> quoting stupid lines in my books. Um, I write like I talk, and I'm very loose with how I talk, and that's how I write, too, is a very loose, you know, like we're sitting down and we're talking. Um, but, and of course, none of this, I'm not saying I'm better than any of these guys. In fact, I'm not, obviously, they, they're doing something right. But to say that they are good at what they do because they're popular, and then, you know, at the same time, laugh about James Patterson over here on this side, obviously he's doing something right. He's making that money, you know. Um, he's pleasing people, and that's all that really matters you know, at the end of the day is whether or not people are happy with your content. And as long as people are, there's no reason to listen to some fat fuck on the internet. But anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.